Allen, and welcome to our symposium, The Butterfly in the Room, Navigating School, Work, and Life with Lupus. Our topic today focuses on the social challenges of being a young adult living with lupus, but really anyone living with lupus can benefit from our discussion today. I am Dr. Lindsay Springer, a licensed physical therapist and your MC for today's symposium. And I too am living with lupus. We'll be hearing from two experts on this topic, Dr. Sharon Dowell and Ingrid Hansen. Dr. Dowell is a practicing rheumatologist at Howard University Hospital, and today she will be sharing her perspective and strategies for those dealing with lupus as young adults. Ingrid Hansen is with the Professional Relations and Advocacy Team of Arinia Pharmaceuticals. Ingrid will share her own perspective on lupus and lupus nephritis during this time of life as well as the tools and resources for Marinia's All In program. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank our presenting sponsor, Arinia Pharmaceuticals, for making this event possible. Now, let's hear from Dr. Sharon Dowell. Thank you, Lindsay, for that wonderful introduction. I am so happy to talk to all of you today about the butterfly in the room, navigating work, school, and play with lupus. I know that most of you are all familiar with lupus, but for those of you who are not, lupus is an autoimmune condition that can affect almost any part of your body. Most commonly, it causes joint pain and arthritis, a skin rash, and the most um, popular of those rashes is the butterfly rash that can affect the face. And it can also cause kidney involvement, which can lead to chronic kidney disease. Most often affects young to middle-aged women, and it affects women nine to 10 times more commonly than it does men. But it can occur as well in older women, in men, in teenagers, and in children. Lupus likely affects about 350,000 to 1 million persons in the US. This number can vary a little bit depending on what source you use for these estimates. But regardless, what we know is that it affects a lot of people. Today, we are talking about something that is pretty obvious, but not usually addressed in the doctor's visits, the butterfly in the room. And that is a significant impact of lupus on almost every aspect of your life. At doctor's visits, we tend to focus a lot on your symptoms, on blood results, on medications, but we do know that your health is a lot more than just a recitation of medications and symptoms. There is so much more to what can happen for you and that lupus can have an impact on your physical, mental, social, and economic well-being. With respect to your physical well-being, you know, many people with lupus will have the skin rash, which can be itchy and uncomfortable. They can have severe joint and muscle pain, fatigue, and tiredness. Some people may also have severe complications that will require frequent doctor's visits, rehabilitative therapy, physical therapy, infusions, and other therapies that can consume your time and your energy. And of course, medication side effects can also have an effect on how you feel. Then there is your mental and your emotional well-being. Fatigue, depression, anxiety, and fear are common with people who live with lupus. Fatigue and the mental fog are common complaints that affect your ability to work, to study, or even to spend time with families and friends. These symptoms, as well as constant joint and muscle pain and the rashes, together or alone, can lead to isolation as you withdraw from you know, your social events, and then can also lead to depression. The uncertainty of lupus, of never knowing whether a day may be a good day or a bad day, of whether you may have a severe flare, or just thinking about the future and how it can affect your life, in addition to the usual struggle of regular living, right, the stresses of deadlines for exams, of projects to submit for work, can really induce anxiety for patients who live with lupus. And we cannot forget to talk about your economic well-being as well. Lupus can be expensive in many ways, some of them obvious and some of them not quite so obvious. Persons who have lupus may miss days from work. 
they may be unable to take advantage of opportunities to be promoted, and they may resign early from work as well, all of which eventually leads to a loss of income during the most productive time of your life and can make planning for retirement so much more difficult. But this is not just my idea or your idea. The bigger impact of lupus is actually really well documented. There is research on the impact of lupus on employment, on school, and on social life. Maybe not so much for the last two, but we can always extrapolate. Much of the information that we have is from surveys of persons living with lupus and from lupus registries here in the US and also in Europe. The information tells a pretty similar and consistent story. To illustrate this, I had to refer to one particular study by a group out of Atlanta that looked at a cohort of patients in the Georgia Lupus Registry. What they found was that overall, the risk of unemployment or losing a job in patients who have SLE was four times higher than in the general population. And of the patients employed at diagnosis, almost 50% of those patients experienced work loss with an average duration of lupus of 13 years. The proportion of patients who lost their jobs since diagnosis was greater for African Americans than for white patients. But overall, patients who had severe disease activity or had organ damage had the highest rates of unemployment. And those who remained employed, the patients who had severe fatigue or what we call neurocognitive symptoms, which is the brain fog or difficulty concentrating and joint pain and arthritis, had the highest impairment of what we call work productivity. What does that mean? Well, work productivity means that you're less productive at work. So you're working less hours and therefore you're earning less and you have a lower chance of promotion or a lower chance of having new opportunities in work. With respect to school, most of the data we have is collected for school performance in patients who have pediatric lupus. That is, they had onset of lupus during childhood. And it makes sense that the earlier that lupus disrupts your life, then the consequences can be further reaching because your whole trajectory for your life is dampened. It is thought that about four out of 10 children or teenagers with lupus have some cognitive difficulty. And that means they have issues with academic achievement, reading comprehension, arithmetic, visual memory, and issues solving complex tasks. In one study, they actually surveyed the students and parents of patients, of students who had lupus. And these students felt that they would have performed better in class if they did not have lupus. And when they spoke to the parents, overwhelmingly they all agreed that there were increased missed classes because of illness or doctor's appointments. And what about if you develop lupus as a young adult on your way to college to get an undergraduate or a postgraduate degree? There will be challenges as well. Lupus can affect the ability to complete coursework. It can affect your overall GPA and ultimately can have an impact on your ability to be competitive in your career of choice. It can also be a challenge for social and family relationships. One study looked at persons with lupus stratified according to age of lupus diagnosis to see whether it had an impact on relationship status. Now they use this relationship status, so marriage or being in a long-term relationship as a surrogate for social engagement and for having a social life. And we can argue that that may not be the most accurate measure but still, the results were pretty interesting. In this cohort, patients with SLE diagnosed between 18 and 30 years of age were 14% less likely to be married or in a long-term relationship. And patients who had lupus onset when they were a child were about 30% less likely to be murdered in a long-term relationship. So we can see the long-term consequences of having a chronic illness and the impact it can have on our social life as well. So I know that this information may seem like a downer, but there is good news. <laughs> um, early treatment of lupus can prevent long-term damage, can prevent lupus flares, it can improve joint and muscle pain, and it can also have a positive impact on fatigue. Right now, there's a lot of excitement and positive momentum in lupus research. 
we have a lot of new therapies in the works. So before we talk about mechanisms to tackle how to deal with your work and social life, just want to make sure that you understand that you should see your doctor regularly so that any lupus flare can be picked up early before they become severe. Take your medications every day to prevent flares and ultimately to prevent damage from lupus. And in this, be an advocate for yourself. This is one of the first steps in maintaining a healthy lifestyle and to having a productive life at school, at work, and at play. But what else can you do? The most frustrating aspect of dealing with lupus is that it can have this very unpredictable nature. You have these flares where some days you're doing good and others you feel pretty sick. How do you let your employer or your teacher understand that? And how do you plan for this when it's so unpredictable? And the fatigue is also very frustrating. It is not the normal fatigue that people deal with. It is so much more. It is debilitating. How can you get your co-workers or your schoolmates, your friends or your family to understand this? And how do you plan for it? And how do you get everyone to understand that even though you may look okay on the outside, that you're not feeling very well because you have this severe condition? And these frustrations highlight the main challenges that people face, whether it's with work, school or socially. The main issues are getting time off when you are having a flare and not feeling well being able to get to and from work when your joints hurt, the lack of understanding from your supervisors or from your classmates, a reluctance in making adjustments for your conditions at work or at school, and a lack of understanding from your colleagues, friends, and family members. So there are a few simple strategies to help with managing this area of your life and with life in general. You need to be proactive. So talk to your healthcare providers and educate your employers. Be knowledgeable, know your rights, and ask about work accommodations or school accommodations. Be active for yourself. Learn about self-management, plan for your future. Join a local support group and be an advocate. You can talk to your doctors first about the issues that you're having, and they can help to guide and advise you if your medications are causing issues, maybe they can adjust your medications in terms of the way you take them. Some people do have difficulty remembering to take medications while they are working. So is there a way to change your schedule? Your doctor may also recommend physical therapy to help with joint pain and stiffness. And they can also show you exercises that you can do on your own to help with this. They may recommend occupational therapy where a therapist can help you to find gadgets or devices that can help you adapt your work environment so that you're able to do your job. And you should also have a discussion with your doctor and occupational therapist about what accommodations they think you may need for your work environment. Then you can think about educating your employer, your colleagues, and your family. Now, you do not have to tell your employer or your school about lupus, but it may sometimes make it easier for them to understand what you're dealing with if they have some information. Some support groups advocate sharing information or informational pamphlets about lupus with your employers. But it's up to you to decide whether this is something you want to do. You may also choose to tell a few colleagues or peers if you work in a trusted environment. And this may help you to understand that your situation and to know what living with lupus can be like. But again, this is your choice to do. Consider bringing a trusted friend or a relative with you to your doctor's appointments. This way, your doctor can also help to educate your relatives and your family about your lupus. Be knowledgeable as well and know your rights. The Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, is a civil rights legislation intended to make society equally accessible for people with disabilities. And that includes health impairments that are episodic or in remission. So chronic illness, lupus included, is recognized as a disability for this purpose. The law requires employers to make reasonable accommodations to enable the disabled employee to perform his or her job. However, what is reasonable may be a matter of interpretation. But the most important thing to know is that the ADA provisions apply 
when the employer knows that you have a disability. You will also need to check your local state laws to see what else is available to you. So what are accommodations and what should you do about this? Accommodations are equipment or processes that can be added to the work environment so that you can continue working even though you have a health condition. And it's something that you should ask for in order to continue working. This is hard for some of us to do because it is really hard to ask for help. You should know that your employer school does not need to know the details of your condition in order for you to request accommodations. They just have to know that you have an illness. And you can do this by having your doctor write a letter or you can sit and talk to your employer in person. So some accommodations include having more time to do exams or to do homework assignments from school. Um, you can ask for extensions or deadlines on assignments. And also, if you have difficulties with your concentration, you may want to have more time for your exams. Sometimes in the physical office building, you may need to have covers for fluorescent lights, because as we know, fluorescent light can exacerbate lupus. And then you can ask for flexible work and hours if this is feasible with your job. Maybe starting later in the day if you suffer from joint pain and stiffness early in the morning. And then during your work, you can try to schedule frequent rest periods or even ask about working from home. Other things that you can do at work and at school is to have ergonomic keyboards. And if you have to do a lot of standing, asking for a padded floor mat. So if you stand a lot, this can help as well. And if you work outdoors, you can ask about working in the shade where there's not so much light exposure and maybe ask to do less physically demanding jobs. Also, be active and be self-aware. This means that you need to know yourself and need to know your own health. You need to understand how to manage your energy, to take frequent breaks throughout the day when you're working or at school or studying. Prepare for activities ahead of time that you know may actually sap your energy and plan around it. Plan for these events. Plan to take the day off afterwards if you know that you'll be fatigued right afterwards. Incorporate regular exercise, which is good for mental and physical well-being, but pace yourself, especially during the time of a flare. Protect your joints by wearing well-cushioned and supportive shoes when you're at work. Avoid activities that can cause harm and deplete your energy, like tobacco use or excessive alcohol use. And then what we call common sense things. So prioritize rest and having a good night's sleep. Find ways that you know you can manage your stress and surround yourself with positive people and positive energy. But most of all, in being active, you need to have a plan. Thinking ahead can help to prioritize what is important to you. And this is important in every aspect of your life. You will need to plan for the career you choose and when to have a family. And just a, a mention here about pregnancy, that if you're planning for a family, you will need to coordinate this with your doctor. So make sure that they are aware as well. You can strive to be whatever you dream to be, but remember that jobs that require high physical work may be harder to maintain, but not impossible with an understanding employer, flexibility, and reasonable accommodations. And lastly, don't do it on your own because you are not alone. Make sure to join a support group or organization. They can offer advice, tips, and provide knowledge, opportunities for socialization, and most of all, support in an understanding environment. Be an advocate for yourself and for others living with lupus. I want to thank Kaleidoscope Fighting Lupus for sponsoring this talk on such an important topic. And I really hope that it was informative and helpful for those of you listening today. Thank you, Dr. Dowell. Your thoughts on the challenges that come with living with lupus at this time of life are incredibly helpful. Next, we will be hearing from Ingrid Hansen. Welcome, Ingrid. Hello, I'm so happy to be joining Kaleidoscope Fighting Lupus for the butterfly in the room, navigating school, life, and work with lupus. My name is Ingrid Hansen, and I am one of the professional relations and advocacy team members at Arinia Pharmaceuticals, and I'd like to share with you a little bit about All In for Lupus Nephritis. 
But before we go into the all in and all the details, I'd like to share with you a little bit about why Arrhenia felt it was so important to create a disease awareness program specifically for lupus nephritis. So one of the things that All In is trying to achieve here is creating strength within the community of people living with lupus and lupus nephritis. As you can see on the slide, Nas is a young man on the right-hand side holding up the sign with his mom and care partner, Pam. Nas is a young person living with lupus and lupus nephritis. He was diagnosed with both at the same time in 2017 while he was still in high school. You can learn a little bit more about Nas and his journey on the All In website. We'll come back to that a little later in the presentation. And I think I'd like to go into a little bit of the background on what lupus nephritis is for some of you who may not be as familiar with it. Um, but I'm sure most of you are well aware that lupus is a serious and chronic disease with many complications. The immune system attacks healthy cells of the body and that inflammation for caused by lupus can affect different parts of the body from joints and skin to the brain, heart, lungs, and the kidneys. When lupus specifically affects the kidneys, that condition is called lupus nephritis. It's important to point out that about 50% of the people living with lupus may go on to develop lupus nephritis. Lupus nephritis is a common but very serious complication of lupus that involves the inflammation of the kidneys. This inflammation can cause permanent damage within the kidneys, where the kidneys can't function properly to remove waste from the blood, control the amount of fluids in the body, and lupus nephritis can cause these serious health problems that lead to permanent damage and can even lead to kidney failure. Uh, when we talk to young people living with lupus, it's so important to understand that early diagnosis and treatment of lupus nephritis may help prevent irreversible kidney damage. So as we move forward and talk a little bit more about what the All In program is, I think it's important to mention that Arrhenia created this program with insights from the lupus nephritis community to support early diagnosis of lupus nephritis and inform discussions between people with lupus and their healthcare professionals about lupus nephritis. So now that we've discussed a little bit about why it's so important to have a disease state awareness program focused specifically on lupus nephritis, let's talk a little bit about what the All In program is. All In is an educational and support awareness program focused on diagnosis of lupus and living with lupus nephritis, empowerment of and support for people affected by lupus nephritis through information, tools, and resources. And specifically for young people with lupus nephritis, there are tools to help in many of the social interactions and transitions, like moving out of your parents' home for the first time, maybe living with roommates, going to college, getting your first job, etc. And we can talk a little bit more about those resources on the next slide. So here you look at, this is a snapshot of the All In program. All In, from the name of the program through the content and resources, was developed using feedback and insights provided directly from the lupus and lupus nephritis community. The program offers a website with information around signs and symptoms of lupus nephritis, diagnosis of the disease, as well as tips for managing lupus nephritis once it's diagnosed. You can hear directly from people living with lupus nephritis in their personal journeys, including their challenges as well as their triumphs. What you see here, that first picture on the left-hand side is a snapshot of what the website looks like. You can go through some of the navigation tools at the top um, that we spoke about, about diagnosing and managing your lupus nephritis. If you look on the far right-hand side of your screen, this is just a screenshot of the videos and personal stories um, that you can find on the All In website. We mentioned Nas earlier in the presentation and his story is in that top left corner. Um, and you can hear Nas talk about what it was like to be diagnosed simultaneously with lupus and lupus nephritis as a high school student and the importance of the care partner relationship that he has with his mom, Pam, as a strong advocate for his wellness. In addition to Nas' story, there are other stories that you can check out about starting families and working and living with lupus nephritis. Also on the resources tab, you'll find sample letters you can use to inform your employers or school about your condition, including considerations for creating a healthy working and learning environment. 
There are resources about how to talk to friends and family members about your lupus nephritis. There are resources about a guide for care partners and tips for caring for someone with lupus nephritis. To help raise awareness of lupus nephritis and empower those living with the condition, All In has created the Lupus Nephritis Awareness Kit and newsletters. As you can see here inside the kit, you'll find resources to help increase your understanding of lupus nephritis, along with tips for managing your disease. You can register for the All In community and the kit through the All In website. Once registered, you'll have immediate access to all the digital resources that will come in a link from a confirmation email. The kit shown here will be mailed directly to the address you provide in the registration and you'll also have access to some of the seasonal newsletters you see here on the right hand side and they will show information on updates on events happening within the community any new information around lupus nephritis and health and wellness tips including healthy kidney friendly recipes if you're interested in joining the all in community you can do that in a couple of different ways. First of all, you can visit the All In website to learn more about lupus nephritis at www.allinforln.com. Check out All In on the Facebook page for tips and information and you can connect with others. Additionally, you can sign up for the Lupus Nephritis Awareness Kit that will come straight to your door full of helpful lupus nephritis resources like a doctor discussion guide and a glossary of terms. And all of these digital resources are available for immediate download. I want to thank you all for listening and learning more about bringing lupus nephritis out of the shadows. And I really want to thank Kaleidoscope Fighting Lupus for inviting Narenia to be part of the butterfly in the room. This is a very important program and I hope you will all find some benefit in the all in resources that might be helpful in navigating social interactions and transitioning to new jobs and schools as young adults living with lupus and lupus nephritis. Thank you, Ingrid, and thanks for sharing those tools for approaching this challenging time of life. This brings us to the end of our symposium, The Butterfly in the Room, Navigating School, Work, and Life with Lupus. We hope you found this discussion and the resources helpful. And once again, a special thanks to our presenters, Dr. Sharon Dowell and Ingrid Hansen. And a big thanks to our presenting sponsor, Orinia Pharmaceuticals, and of course to Kaleidoscope Fighting Lupus for both of their continued support of those living with lupus and lupus nephritis. Finally, we want to thank you for watching. We encourage you to visit our website, kaleidoscopefightinglupus.org, and follow our social media platforms for the latest lupus news, event information, and our award-winning blog articles. And there is so much more. Thank you for spending time with us. I'm Dr. Lindsay Springer for Kaleidoscope Fighting Lupus. Please take care.